And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Black ass going, going, going. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. For those of you that follow me on Snapchat, you know that I am a runner. And a few times a week, you get beautiful pictures of whatever route I'm running that morning. And what I think it's done for some of you is it's kind of opened your mind to the idea of, you know, your interest in running, but you don't really know where to start. So I thought I would answer your questions. How do you start running? What's the best way to become a runner? For those of you that don't follow me on Snapchat, the reason I I run is, I mean, there's multiple reasons why I run. I, I love running. It does, I don't look at it as working out. I don't look at it as anything other than just part of who I am. I am a runner. Um, I started running when I was 16 in high school, did it pretty consistently through college, and then it kind of tapered off in my mid-20s to my early 30s, and then found it again and with a much better understanding of, of what it was. But what I love about running is when I'm out running, I don't, I never feel a sense of appreciation more than when I crest a hill or when I get up to a certain elevation and, and I'm able to like look around and get a view of the valley, get a view of, you know, South San Jose. And it's just, I, I'm, my breath is taken away every time I do it. And I do it multiple times a week. And it's still, I still get up to the top of some of those hills and look around and go, man, this is really amazing. And trust me, if San Jose can look amazing, then any place can look amazing. San Jose is really great for food and for running. I mean, that's pretty much it. Zero personality here whatsoever. But maybe it's just a big city thing. Maybe it's a, it grew too fast sort of a thing. So I love everything about running. The beauty, the way it makes me feel, what it does for my ADHD brain. And I love how you guys are asking me questions about it because that means I get to sh- that means I'm making it look good enough to share with you and I think it's such a special thing that if you are inclined to be a runner I want to help you get to you know start that start that journey of yours and and it's just, it's been such a cool thing for me hopefully it can be a cool thing for you too where do you start like I said before I don't look at it as as a as working out, I don't look at it as work. I look at it as just a lifestyle. I'm just a runner. So I think the 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 important thing for you is don't come into it going, oh, I want to lose 10 pounds. Oh, I want to use t- lose 20 pounds. I want to, you know, don't look at it like that because once you reach that goal, do you stop running? Once you drop the 20 pounds or the 40 pounds, do you go back to eating like crap? No. So look at it, look at it more like a lifestyle. So in order for it to become a lifestyle, you have to build it up in a healthy way. Don't just get out and go, okay, I'm going to go run you know, run my ass off and, and I'm going to go run a mile and as fast as I can. And I'm going to run up this hill as fast as I can. That's the worst way to do it. Not only is it harder on your body, but it's going to set up to where you're sore more and you're going to, you're not going to want to be out there running. Cause if you're sore tomorrow, you're not going to want to run. Right. So why don't you set yourself up for success by, by taking these methods and stuff that I'm going to show you and applying it to your running and start it from the beginning so that you grow in a really like this is the the most efficient, healthiest way to to develop your running. So the first thing you're, you're going to do, and this is kind of the foundation of all your running is, is you're going to do, um, you're going to use a thing called the MAF method. That's M-A-F. And what it is, is it's the heart rate zone that you're going to run in the whole time you're running that allows your body to be running and fueling itself with fat instead of sugar. So that's great for, you know, your belly and your fat butt. So you're going to be burning, you're going to be burning that. But it's also your, your body's in a different state when it's burning fat instead of burning sugar. Think of burning sugar as when your RPMs go too high on your car and it doesn't shift down to the lower gear. Think of it like that. So you're burning hot or, or when you're cooking something and the, and the water boils over. 
you know, you don't want to burn the food. You got to turn it down because it's, it's doing too much. That's kind of the same thing with, with your heart rate. There are athletes that do it. They run on, on you know, running on high RPMs. But for in the long run, if we're doing this for a lifestyle, if we want to run into our 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s, even 80s. If we want to do that, we have to, we have to set the foundation right so we're not breaking our body down. We're just building it up. So the math method is, is a heart rate. How do you find this heart rate? You take 180 and subtract your age. That is the peak of your heart rate. Now, if you're already in pretty good shape, then you can add, you know, maybe add five to that, maybe add 10 to that. Um, so like for me, I'm 37. So I take 180 minus 37 is 143. So that's the peak. That's the peak of my, um, of my fat burning zone. I'm in good shape. So I add, you know, maybe five to 10 to that. So let's just say the most I'm uh, running at a 153. So 153 is your peak. You subtract 10 from that. So I have 143. So my zone from 143 to 153 is where I should be running, which, which should be my heart rate for my entire run. How do you check this? Well, you're going to need a heart monitor and a strap. I use a Garmin, um, but there's Polar. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of difference. There's Fitbit stuff with, with heart rate monitors, but make sure you have a heart rate monitor because you have to track it. And when you reach your peak, you have to stop or walk. Don't stop or slow down. Now, this is going to be frustrating in the beginning because you're going to hit your peak and you're not going to feel like you're really running. So you, but you, what you really need to do is you need to make sure that you keep your ego in check and do this because you know we're focusing on the long game. We're not doing the short game thing. We're not doing the impatient thing. So you need to focus on the fact that you are going to, this is this is a building process. And what happens is you have this this heart rate zone. For me, I have the, you know, the 143 to 153 is my heart rate zone. At first, when I hit hills and when I um, maybe go too fast, I'm going to have to walk. But what happens is, and this is the beauty of this thing, is this is, in a much easier way in your body, it is allowing you to keep that heart rate and then you you start going faster and faster and faster. So pretty soon you're able to go up a steep hill in your heart rate where before you were having to walk up the whole thing. You're able to do you know, a 730 mile or an eight minute mile where before you were doing a 930 or a 10 minute mile. It's pretty amazing. And it's a slow build, but what it does is easier on your joints, it's easier on your muscles, easier on your tendons which allow you to not only train more because you feel better, but it's better for your body in the long run. So math method, 180 minus your age and a heart rate monitor. That's kind of the foundation of this whole thing. Next, you're going to have to pick your running route. Now, I don't suggest a treadmill because I don't know how you can fall in love with the treadmill. You're just watching TV or watching other people at the gym. And the thing for me that really connects me um, when I run is just being outside and being in nature. Um, if you go out early enough, you see a beautiful sunrise. If you go out late enough, you see a beautiful sunset. You get to see the hills, mountains. And so you pick your path. What's the most beautiful place around you? Is there a park? Is it, um, are there hills you can run up? Are there trails you can run up? Is there a lake you can run around? What's going, just pick a beautiful spot and run there. And that's one thing that San Jose is fantastic for is beautiful running spots where there are parks everywhere trails everywhere for running it's awesome so pick the beautiful spot in your city pick the place that you can get to easily because you don't want to deter yourself from running because you don't want you know you don't want to give yourself an excuse to not go out and run so pick a beautiful spot pick a beautiful route pick a couple hills so you can get the view of things pick pick spots where you're going to run around and you're just gonna you can take it in and you can um, appreciate what's around you and I know this sounds like total hippie stuff, but once you once you get into it and start doing it, you're gonna see it. You're you're gonna you're gonna feel there's just there's an appreciation with the amount of beauty that's around us. And I know I'm gonna make myself puke by sounding like such a hippie, but it's it's what it is. I get up, the mornings I run, I hit those hills, and it's just it's it's gorgeous, and I never get tired of it. And there's so much beauty around us. And running is like the perfect sport to appreciate it because you can go uh, slow enough that you can take it in and you can like be a part of it and you can um, explore it. It's such it's a perfect sport for exploring nature. So you got to pick your route. You have your math method. 
you have your routes, everything set up. So now you have to worry about recovery. And I'm not going to get too much into the nutrition and the sleep. But keep in mind, nutrition and sleep are very important for muscle recovery and for getting you ready for the next day's run. Two tools that you're going to need for this to help recovery are uh, is a lacrosse ball and a foam roller. Now you use the lacrosse ball, sit down, put the lacrosse ball on the ground, and rub your feet over the top of it. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help all the tighten tendons and everything in your feet because the feet, I mean, your feet are your foundation. So when you're, if your back hurts, usually your back hurts because of something to do with a hamstring or a quad. And if your quad hurts, it's because your calves are tight. And if your calves are tight, it's because you, you know, your Achilles is, is tight or the bottom of your feet are tight. So, so we want to start from the root, which is the bottom of your feet, which you're going to be using a lot because you're running. And you're going to loosen up those tendons and stuff in the bottom of your feet and those muscles. And that's going to set everything else up for, um, for recovery and, and, and loosen those, those restrictions and stuff on your tendons. Then you're going to use the foam roller and use the foam roller for your calves, for the back of your legs, for your quads, and for your back. And that will help loosen everything up. And this is, to me, this has been more effective than stretching. Stretching, you run the risk of either pulling a cold muscle or pulling a tired muscle. So instead of doing, you know, you see those people do those hardcore stretches before they run, you're not warmed up and you're just going to end up hurting yourself from stretching. And when you're, when you're done running and your legs are tired and your muscles are tired, when you stretch too much, you're going to pull something because your, your muscles are tired. So just if you roll out at night, when you wake up the next day, you're gonna, you, you will feel the difference, especially with the lacrosse ball. You'll feel the difference. Your feet will feel so much better as they're hitting the pavement, and you'll, um, you'll thank me for it. So hope this sets you up to uh, start your running career. I absolutely love it. And if you guys have any other questions about running or anything else we're doing, or you want to shoot me a, a question, um, one thing that I actually started doing is just answering the questions directly on Snapchat because some of them are more, um, more personal, more immediate. So if you have questions that like, really, if you have questions about anything, if I, if I have an answer for you, or if I have a, a book recommendation, or if I have a website recommendation, you can get it right away. This doesn't have to be something where you wait for a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing to, uh, to get an answer. But if it's a big answer, if it's a big question, and I, I feel that, that it could benefit a lot of people, I'll throw it up here. Because remember, we're on, we're here on YouTube, we're on SoundCloud, we're on iTunes. So a lot of people um, are helping, whether it's in one place or another. And I'm also using these questions to post blogs all over the place too. So these questions really, really are helping people. And I'm, I'm really loving the, the feedback I'm getting. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to help um, so many people out there. So if you have questions, Snapchat, Twitter, Hit me up directly here in the comments. I'm here to help. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and send me some snaps of your, uh, of your running. I would love to see where you guys are running. I love seeing pictures from, uh, from all over the world and all over the country to see what, um, what you guys see. Have a good weekend, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go, go, go. Just as Joe. 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 My wife's always talking about how good she used to be and how she used to play basketball and how she was awesome. I thought I was like, wow. So. Let's keep that Bless up. You. You should be an all-star, huh? I was the starter on my sixth grade basketball team. <laughs>